जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रुवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु श्री राम कृष्ण हाउ दे रियलाइज सोल दो फ्री एटर्नली एंड बियॉन्ड द लिमिट्स ऑफ नेचर एंड ही इज एंटरिंग इन टू एटर्निटी ऑफ ब्लिस स्टिल ही कीप्स द ईगो ऑफ ए भक्ता और ईगो ऑफ ए ज्ञानी ego of a devotee or ego of a enlightened soul to teach mankind to give the message and go we saw the narada like even after the realization and when the universe dissolves also there will be the trans relative existence to come back and give the news of the transcendental existence as soon as the creation appears again so shri ram krishna is saying god cannot be realized if there is slightest attachment to the things of the world world worldly things because whatever we see as world and try to hold on to the world for enjoyments or whatever purpose we see we have become a body more and more anything you hold as my and my ego to enjoy and possess the moment i hold on to anything i am becoming body i am releasing all things i am spirit uh, things can be with you things you may use for the purpose of all the social conditions and all you may say this is mine but if it is not there in your awareness as mine it is going to help you it is yours only but the sense of mine and i makes the attached now the moment the attachment comes i am body intensely body and you can remain the same world with the same things way same thing going on with detachment it's a kind of detached attachment which you call dispassion he is not in the mind he is not holding it for the purpose of the social this one and all he says is mine he doesn't mean that it is mine he has no that sense of mindness over it uh, similarly the more we release like this oh everything belongs to god for two days i am with these things uh, and i have to leave this and go one day all this belong to god my family belongs to god my property belongs to god i have to leave the family also and go if it was mine it would never have parted from me even at the time of death body also have to live and go what is mine here this understanding oh i have been blessed to be amidst this and use this freely so this much this is dispassion dispassion is not running away or throwing away but uh, changing the attitude towards the world and things so the world will remain as it is you if you can cultivate this passion then you are not holding on to the world you are no hold on the world you are not possessing anything for enjoyment uh, 
uh, it is there my party is there to protect and serve and my whole attention is how to transcend and enter the ocean of bliss eternal bliss pleasures momentary pleasures no doesn't matter i want that so here shri ram krishna says god cannot be realized if there is slight attachment to things of the world not that you should not possess or should run away you should not attachment to that means i cannot live without it is mine that sense of mindness a thread cannot pass through the eye of a needle if the tiniest fiber sticks out we usually see hmm one it can never that one such a small thing hmm uh, the thread thread itself is such a thing and one small fiber the most of the uh, thread is trying to go it will not allow it doesn't hmm like, like modern passwords everything is uh, correct one letter alteration one dot is left out you it will not enter the anger and lust of a man who has realized god are only appearances hmm. they don't mean anything uh, there is no intention there is nothing to achieve it will not harm anybody suppose a realized soul realized soul gets angry on someone it is a great blessing it is made in such a way that it, his anger turned to to be make the other person realize uh, the these people express anger and all that for the welfare of people it is not because i am being hurt uh, when i get angry my desires my ambitions my expectations are not met my expect is someone per person to be like this and this to do like this it doesn't do i get angry uh, because i am getting hurt the real soul shows the anger doesn't get angry but shows the anger to remove their correct their to remove his suffering to remove his bondage we get angry to remove my suffering Uh, because my words are not followed my words are uh, not accepted my expectations are not met so this my grief i am becoming anger there it is his welfare oh he should not go that way it's going to make him fall so he is on the cliff he wants to keep a step ahead Uh, the this kind of and it momentarily disappears appears and disappears they use in bengali they say um shadur rag uh, joler dag the uh, sadus anger will be like a uh, water stain on a cloth mm, water the moment water falls on the cloth you see a stain but it doesn't last there it evaporates and the original cloth is formed hmm. yeah, are only appearances they are like burnt string a rope is burnt it remains you light the rope on one side it goes on burning with small fire and you see the rope has ended it is in the same shape as it was rope but it like it cannot bind anybody you cannot lift also just blow it it blows off that which is hmm god is realized as soon as man becomes free from attachment attachment to external objects 
attachment to body, attachment to name and fame, power, all these attachments, not only material attachments. Whatever appears in pure mind is voice of God. This also an ex a beautiful expression, truth. Whatever appears in the pure mind is the voice of God. When mind is pure, it is not seeking anything of this world. It is not holding on to anything of the world. Hmm. Mind is pure. It always thinks well of others. It always thinks uh, calmness, purity, divinity. Hmm. That kind of pure mind. Hmm. In that something appears. We call it prerana. Uh, in uh, uh, Sadhu language, I got a prerana, I must go there now. I am leaving. Some people will be sitting and talking and suddenly they get up. I have got a prerana, I will go now to such and such place. I am going there. They get up and start walking. Uh, that, that mind is so pure, it doesn't think of a wrong thing. Anybody who doesn't tell a lie, physical lie, verbal lie, uh, for 12 years, whatever it, my whole system is so much accustomed, a untruth can never come out of that. Like that, the person who is constantly think of divine, welfare of all beings, is so set that it always seeks the welfare of people and thought of God. There is no attachment, there is no desires, there is no demands, there are no choices. Nothing. It is clean. Like a... Then the any voice comes independent of... Because everything is... For all of us, what we commonly see is our vasanas, our tendencies, what we have acquired, the past momentum, that brings the thoughts. The moment I see an object, that brings a thought. Here, it is not so. What is divine? What is the will of God? They project. It is voice of God. Whatever appears in the pure mind. Pure mind is what always thinks of the good of others, good of the world and constantly in commune with the divine. That which is pure mind is also pure buddhi because they are different modes of the same mind stuff. Mind stuff has four modes of working. Mana, buddhi, chitta, ahankara. Mana, mind, buddhi, intellect, or wisdom, buddhi. Then, mana, buddhi, chitta, the memory unit, and ahankara, ego. So, buddhi and mind can be taken as a buddhi, and manas can be taken as same. Manas, mind and intellect can be considered as same. But working is entirely different. One is Sankalpavikalpatmikam, another is Nishchyatmika. And decisive is intellect. Pros and cons thinking is mind. Again, is pure Atman. How deep it goes, you see. Hmm. Purity of the Atman is flowing into the mind and mind has become like Atman, so much pure. Atman is God. Hmm. Subjective, ultimate, I am calling it God because I am inward, I am going. Atman, I call it. But God is there where I am no more there. So this aspect of existence, hmm. Atman, because there is nothing pure but God. Whatever is pure, pure mind, pure intellect, pure Atman are same. But in order to realize God, one must go beyond Dharma and Adharma. 
Mm-hmm. It's an Im- important thing. We hold on to dharma to overcome a dharma, but it should not become a disease of holding on to dharma. I have to go beyond dharma also. Uh, all aspects, the rules and regulations of the life at social level we call nyaya and at the social level we call it um, dharma in one way but the social level huh, or we can say they are the laws of nature laws of nature working on human existence so these laws of the nature is called dharma and in another sense karma is jiva's individual order dharma is social order and rhythm is cosmic order so dharma how long to hold on to all these things till you realize god till the longing for god appears or afterwards dharma also is missing from your awareness nyaya also is missing nyaya is king's law government's law dharma is the cosmic law law of nature so both you one day when longing for god comes you are stretching yourself beyond the universe the whole universe and the life of an individual jeeva is governed by the time and a cause cause and effect time and space the cause and effect is making karma i am born by karma so the law applies to me as long as i am within this now my i am stretching holding something to stretch beyond the time and space relative existence i am stretching into the absolute so this law if i hold on to the law i cannot go beyond i have to leave everything of this universe give up the laws longing makes detaches you from the longing for god detaches you from all duties and responsibilities of the family of the society of the nation of humanity and makes you frees you from dharma also longing frees you from dharma laws laws cosmic laws applying up, upon you hmm satyam vada dharmam chara all that whatever the um, dharma says hmm holding on to dharma we don't have a fall so there is no question of fall it is raising struggling to raise beyond the limitations here we see a different meaning and one day we have to go cross and go beyond the level of dharma and adharma realizing god is stretching beyond the point all dualities last to our to live is dharma and adharma hmm we stay there is no more law law does not apply any the call law of cause and effect is only within the relative existence we are entering into the transcendental existence of everlasting bliss here there is a combination of sukha and dukha no bliss as such the ananda without a counterpart is called bliss here we may not be able to find bliss unless we are uh, jivan muktas but happiness and misery joys and sorrows pain and pleasure we can find here in this world these dualities are there which we can understand and experience these dualities so uh, we are in the realm where there is no duality also hmm. but in order to realize god one must go beyond dharma and adharma master sang in his melodious voice come let us go for a walk o oh mind to kali the wish fulfilling tree and there beneath it gather the four fruits of life hmm mona cholo no 
Kalpa Vriksha or something it may be. Hmm. Let us go for Kali. Hmm. He, feel, hmm. he is in such a state of mind. He is actually uh, just like uh, children go for picnic. And previous day if you ask, they are preparing their suitcase and all to take for a picnic. And then the people are, what are you doing? How his uh, mind would be trying to express what is going to... Now, whole thing, he's, he has forgotten the world, he has forgotten where he is, where, what he has to do, everything, his whole mind is thinking of the picnic, where my uh, teachers is going to take me. Oh, they have told there will be a mountain, there will be a lake, and there will be a forest. You can experience... All that he is dreaming. Similarly, Thakur is explaining the state of realizing, how you are realizing God. And how the of realization, how that state will be. Come, realizing God. What happens that realizing God? Like going to picnic, what it will be? Like that. He wants to give that experience of having gone beyond what, how it will be. Hmm. Master sang in his melody, Come, let us go for a walk, O oh mind, to Kali, the wish-fulfilling tree. It is not the walk in the world. It is not walk in the nature. It is walk. Yeah eternal transcendence. It is like a bridge. We are walking on a bridge from one side of the ocean to the other side of the ocean. There is entirely another world unrelated to this, but substratum of this exists. There we are going to enter. Hmm. Beneath it gather the four fruits of life. Hmm. Four fruits Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, they are inevitable. Yeah. As soon as we... As soon as we see, uh, we are in that realm of the transcendental realm, uh, it goes. The for human existence demands four things to be fulfilled. Means there is a natural tendency to fulfill this and there is an obligation also. When we come to the understanding, now animals do not have these four. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Uh, artha, Kama is there. It has to graze its foot and fulfill its desires. These two are there for all. Dharma, dharma and moksha are not there. How should I live? The moment a human life comes, human life comes with an intelligence which can understand and contemplate upon. In this understanding, we slowly come to a decisive understanding. Uh, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. I don't need this. There may be a desire which is harmful to me. I may like to fly, uh, that I cannot jump from a cliff. I can't. Desire may be there, but it may not be, uh, we, will, we will not be able to fulfill that desire. Uh, I know that is going to harm me, that is going to destroy me. Then though there is a desire, I withdraw. This much of understanding when it comes from man and he dharma, I have to walk on the path of dharma. That is righteousness because I am born by karma, action and reaction. So uh, what is dharma? Is what do not bind you in the law of karma 
and makes your evolution possible to the divine it not only dharma if you follow there is no it is not going to become karma anything according to dharma you live a life with your family with the loss of nature if you it will never become a karma you need not pay or enjoy the fruit of the action you keep on evolving because of that so which is not misused is not disused it goes on and on forward so dharma you understand so it is if i do other things i am going to be affected so he walks along the righteous path dharma then artha kama whatever is little needed Uh, that is not detrimental to his life living and evolution that he follows then moksha the realization realization comes uh, to these four i will have to attend to i must live on the righteous path i must fulfill all the needs and uh, desires of my life legitimate desires which are not going to harm me in my life dharma artha the earning i have to do dharma artha and kama according to dharma i have to follow dharma according to dharma i must do the earning kama dharma artha and kama i must fulfill all the legitimate desires that and needs of my life i need food i need clothing i need a little comfort all that i i have to take that is i for that i need money artha dharma artha arnis kama fulfillment of desires kama and moksha ultimately in and through all these activities i must ultimately reach the realized state of the, the jivan mukta so dharma artha kama moksha these fruits i must realize god all these who as having born as human being what all you have to fulfill uh, relative fulfillment dharma artha kama and absolute fulfillment in moksha all this you are going to earn and all this you are going to reach all this you are going to enjoy and express hmm. this is come to uh, we will go to for a walk shyam krishna is singing come let us go for a walk o oh, mind is telling the mind the soul self is telling the mind come we'll go kali the wish fulfilling tree whatever you desire you get it but what do you want the four fruits of the life human life dharma artha kama and moksha so beneath beneath that tree you will gather the four fruits of life so continue the next class o shanti 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 hi hari hi om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanam astu